Martell from OverheadAthletics.com. Uh, just recently had a, was contacted by an athlete um, after my previous post about uh, weighted balls and unweighted balls, and he wanted to know about uh, the, the unloading or the underweight balls and whether or not it was a good idea to train with those to try and create more arm velocity. And it just leads me to my previous point. You know, there's going to be believers and non-believers regardless of what you what you advocate for which is why when you look at all the contestation that goes online it's one group that's vested in the product and one group's a group that's you know not vested in the product that are you know competing against each other and the whole point of underload is to try and increase velocity but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have increased velocity in the environment where you're expected to throw a five ounce ball so i told them if it could lead to a better kinest, kinematic sequencing or a better ability to acquire the positions of the throwing motion, I would potentially advocate for it. But once again, why wouldn't you train with the actual ball you're going to use when you're throwing in the environment where you're expected to compete in? So, you know, I've never seen a study that you can't poke holes in. That's the interesting thing as a medical professional when you see these studies, you're like, okay, well, wait a minute. Uh, your, ran, your, your randomization was wrong. You know, how, how did the control group do? Did you control for what the control group did? Was there an, a, an inherent work bias? You know, when you have a bunch of kids, you tell one group to throw with this weighted ball and this group's not going to throw with the weighted ball. This group's potentially going to work harder than that group is. You don't know if there's, you know, growth related changes. So, you know, in the end, you have to be very careful with what you're doing with any athlete, but it all boils down to one, your ability to evaluate how that athlete moves and what you can do to potentially improve that, that athlete's body to move to three-dimensional space in the throwing motion. So I told them, if you're going to do a program, why not include corrective exercise? Why not include you know, elastic elongation of tissues? Why not improve stability and rotational eccentric control? And you know, he already had an athlete that was injured, and so I ended up treating that athlete. They're going to be coming in to see me. And... He said he used a weighted ball program, which, you know, leads into the previous point. You know, I've had too many athletes that have been injured from those, from those weighted balls without any clinical proof or, I think, any research that proves in any way, shape, or form that they're statistically significant and they're going to increase velocity. But um, it's just interesting to hear how many people that are on both sides of the equation and the best thing to do is train your body for what it's going to do in the environment where you're expected to compete. So that's what we do at the OAI. And that's what I just want to talk about today.